formally welcome you back to this ThinkTech Wise Human Humane Architecture. This is our 294th episode already, and you are our accumulated viewer, as you just saw. And thank you, Michael, bring it up again. And us is the bald triumvirate here again with Matt Noblet back in his Boston, Massachusetts, the Soto Brown in his home, Diamond Head, Austin Puff Designed, and me, Martin Despang, back in Munich, Germany. And we will pick up from where we had left last time, how we can get the Banish Boston boost to us in Honolulu. And we will <laughs> tell you more about it in a second. So welcome back, guys. So cheers, because we're going to toast on this being together again with beer. <laughs> How do you Symbol. like that? Yeah, well, it's, it's, not, it's not September Fest yet, as they, as they actually should call it, because it actually happens in September and not October. You're right on. So let's, uh, why you guys might be confused, you signed into the wrong show. This is human humane architecture, but sometimes we get stuck in the discipline or the profession, and we try to break out through some metaphorical other vehicles as automobiles, <laughs> which we have to reconvene our auto architecture show. And today we're going to do beer. And before we start getting into that, we have to say what you are the advocate for, DeSoto, because you stay away from that stuff. And uh, the New York <laughs> Times up there basically has, um, you know, backed you up because it says, you know, this rumor of, oh, a, a little glass here and there is good for you. They say no. But at the very bottom right here, something for you, DeSoto. I can lure you into this one. And this was me, the, the, the menu of uh, our Blue Note on uh, Alakawa Avenue. And this was Sergio Mendes, the old master that I attended his concert before I left. And it's hard to see, actually, you can't see it, so I have to read it to you. One of the beverage choices was Klaus Thaler Alkoholfrei. So that's your, that's your weekly German lesson. Uh, Alkoholfrei means free of alcohol. Free. So this yes, is non, non-alcoholic beer. And I did research that Klaus Thaler is actually the inventor, at least they pride themselves. So this is a German beer brewer that allows you, DeSoto, to drink beer. And they promised, you know, it, it tastes anywhere as good <laughs> like as. But since you're, since you're not a beer drinker to begin with, you know, it doesn't quite matter how close it gets, right? <laughs> <laughs> to that one. So what, no. what kind of other beers do we have up there? So we threw in the one for you, uh, Matt, at the very top left, because you just visited your daughter. Where does she live? Ah, she was in Madrid. <laughs> All right. So this is your beer here that you drink there. And then next to it is uh, Joey. Joey just came from the island of Sardine. And that's their beer they have there. And he's going to report uh, on the, what's going on on that island that we can learn from, uh, probably in bits and pieces. And then Lenny, who you met, told me it's not like I thought that um, I have totally followed Stefan Banish with our youngest son being Lenny, but it's his older son, right, being Lenny. So, but uh, no, younger, younger. Oh, his younger. Oh, it is his younger. So it's my <laughs> younger too. Anyways, <laughs> and that's how we opened the show. Uh, this this show volume here with a volume one because I was in with him that you see in the top middle there the show quote. I was in Ichiban. And Ichiban is obviously an Asian beer, uh, a Japanese beer, but it's also the name. Ichiban is the name of the restaurant. Have you ever been dining there in the bottom of your building in, in Hanover, in my hometown, in your North FB? I've been, no, I've been to the street level place. Is there one in the basement too? That's the one. That's the, well. I mean, it's not oh, okay. the street level. I mean, I'm I'm confused yeah, yeah, yeah. with okay. levels in in different cultures. Yeah, true. Yeah, the first and second <laughs> floor and stuff like that. Now I top that. No, that one. That one. I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, I've been there. <clears throat> so it's a it's a good place. They got their their all you can eat lunch uh, there, and then you wash it down with 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 Kieran, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, and then let us get back to Honolulu because this is exciting. And what can beer help us really? I mean, it's basically, except that song, the soda you remember one, uh, what Germans were singing and saying about Hawaii. What was that again? They have no beer in Hawaii. Exactly. And the guy who <laughs> sang that, that was That's Paul Kuhn. That was Paul Kuhn who sang that, who was actually a gifted, he didn't just do kind of, Songs like that, but he was actually a talented musician, real musician, a jazz musician. And um, and but that was the song. And that the reason what it says is basically he wanted to find excuses not to go to Hawaii, go figure, right? Who, who would do that, right? But I guess back in the days Germans weren't some Germans weren't weren't ready for it, right? So um what kind of the, the beer and <laughs> well, there's the that's saying that that's the that's the point of the song is you don't want to go there because they have no beer. I didn't, I of course don't know what the lyrics are. That's what he tells his future wife oh. who wants to get married in Hawaii. And he uses that lame, stupid excuse. Oh. Right? All right. See, now I've been <laughs> educated again. Thank you. So talking about beer in Hawaii, because there is, I mean, there was also, Hawaii. there was also this uh, Oktoberfest song. Yeah. If our Nemo's in New York, it's then, <laughs> exactly. That's that's actually Udo Jürgens, right? Who's who sang that? Yeah, another one. <laughs> so there's you gotta wonder. You, we found two songs who kind of take a weird angle, and maybe for that reason, Desoto, you had to, you guys had to do your own beer, right? We and did. there goes a there goes a, goes an, a, a world innovation with it. What was that one? Recall that one. We have the show quote at the very. Um, left in the in the center of that column michael if you can zoom on to that one well That's there have great. there have been a, a number of different beers that have been brewed here but the most famous one is primo and in 1958-59 primo was the first beer company in the entire world to can beers in aluminum cans and it was an innovative uh, way of making aluminum cans because before that cans were not made of aluminum, they were made of steel. And this was something that did not really, it, that particular technology didn't really take off. And it, it involved a disc of aluminum and then a piston went down through it and formed it into a can. Well, anyway, this was the first such aluminum beer can in the entire world. And it was used by Primo <laughs> Beer right here on the island of Hawaii. There you go. And um, the other place that the, both Günthers come from, Günther Banish and Günther Despang, that's the beer at the very bottom right. That's a Radeberger. That's the town close to Dresden. And where I have to go soon to see my, see my parents. And uh, one day, some years ago, I was going into the grocery store and I found what we see in the very center what's supposed to be the Hawaiian beer that is longboard and you could buy it like for six bucks a bottle of beer, which is <laughs> insane, but you basically pay the same for a real German beer. And so this is the, this is the, the combo or the, the brand longboard, right? That's when tourists come and they want to find finally, you know, there is beer in Hawaii and there is, oh, we want to go for that <laughs> Hawaiian beer, right? Well, never mind that company got sued recently for, you know, falsely pretending that and fully brewing uh, on the mainland. And, and by the way, I mean, when you say beer, I mean, there's the, okay, there's another German lesson for you to sort of, we bombard you with these. Das Deutsche Weinheitsgebot. What might that be? <laughs> German something. <laughs> you, give him, you give him a hint, Matt, because you're bilingual. It's the, it's the, Oh, it's the legally sanctified recipe for beer that everyone has to follow. Like oh. quantity of quantity of water, quantity of hops, quantity of yeast. It's, it's very specific. In, in Germany, everybody must do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In order to, to be. Yeah. To be in order to, to sell them, beer. sell as kind of beer. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and okay. since since the medieval ages, since the monks got heavily into that <laughs> stuff, <laughs> and everyone every everyone obeys to obeys well, to that one. Germans do as they're told. I'm I'm uh, I'm learning so much today. So well, it's the reason they can sell it for like 
like two euros 50 or something is the it, they, they compete pr purely on price right there's no difference in theory oh. Oh. or the quality difference mm -hmm. is very minor so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so what would what would your daughter and 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 lenny the lenny's basically drink if they would be in hawaii and if they would have been growing up on hawaii and that's the to the left of uh the longboard that's really weird because the belgium brewery uh heineken <laughs> was totally successful to sell this to the locals to say that is their beer and there's <laughs> even like t-shirts that said heineken hawaiian so good job a uh, pr <laughs> department of heineken but also going back to now more full circle to us in hawaii because at the very bottom uh, right to the, the 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 left one of, of the two one at the very bottom right uh, that's actually a when our tropical tudor bill took me out to what you just said the soto that we're most famous for here in bavaria which is the october fest which should be called september fest um at the waikiki yacht club at our waikiki yacht club they had an october fest and he was pretty good dancing the shua blatla which is that weird dance that the, with the later hosen they slap on their later hosen I got some videos of that. We might want to play that at some point. Just so to embarrass you, Bill. No, we, we don't you might want to, to bla blackmail him with it. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And so uh, that beer here, that you just, if you can show it again, Michael, that one was served. And I was wondering, this is really weird, because there's some weird stuff too. There's actually some St. Pauli beer, which does not exist in Germany. St. Pauli is where the Reeperbahn, and which is not far away from the Unilever project that you guys have done so that's in, in hamburg mm -hmm. that beer does not exist in germany it's purely made up for export to americans but this beer <laughs> is really brewed so we were quizzing people here because it's actually only one town over and it's uh it's not to be confused with um what's the other one met the the most famous i'm blanking on the oh like paulana or augustiner yeah 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 yeah. there's the other one that sounds almost the same but this one here is a fairly small brewery actually seriously only one, two towns over and there was one guy in the marketing department who against <clears throat> his bosses there was basically saying i'm gonna pitch this to hawaii no matter what and he was <clears throat> so this is seriously the stuff from there that you at least could drink at the waikiki yacht club Oktoberfest. So talking about a cosmopolitan world. And the last beer we have is the one in the hands of that lady there next to it. And that is our dear Kaili Chun that we've been reporting about, uh, who we just uh, ran into the Soto at the Dokomomo Talk Story event that left a little bit of a different taste in our mouth, talking a taste. And, uh, <laughs> and that, is, uh, that is a butt line. Kaili doesn't give, you know, <laughs> she just says, you know, have a butt light and that's, that does it for me. And I was, I was, I wanted to find, because I was talking about this last time about her very tough, you know, installation that she put up in Waimanalo on the beach. And I talked about the cages at the very top of them. And on her website, I, I, I called her out on that one. I say, basically, where, where is that? She doesn't have it anymore. So I was digging into my <laughs> images, and there is the, in the II gallery, uh, there it still is. There's the cages at the very top, which her message oh, is yeah. to her local people. Yes, we got a prison. Yes, we got overthrown. <clears throat> but ever since the door is open, the lock is not locked. Uh, we have to get out of this. And that's why we were saying to Stoto, and you like the idea, you endorsed it next time. You developers do, um, do a high rise, let not Kaili just do that little artwork in there, but let your architects that you bring in do the, do the artwork and let Kaili do the architecture, maybe in collaboration with you, Matt, because Kaili is Gladly. East, Coast, East Coast educated in, in Princeton <laughs> under Michael Graves back in the gold 80s. Mm -hmm. And uh, ever since, you know, she's been the most rocking artist in Hawaii. And it's <laughs> time for us to let her do architecture, just as the other gentleman we've been talking about here. He is Mr. Sean 
Connelly, uh, who um, um, says here he is a doctor, and that's the degree he got from us at UH. So talking about, you know, the, the Lenny who are in medical, or no, that was the, the his brother who was in medical school, right? From Bain, from from Stefan's son, right? Right, right. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. So so but, you know, and, just to just to also just to also bring this back to architecture, Martin, uh, all of our computers in our office are named after German beers. And after 15 years, we still haven't exhausted the supply of unique German beer names for each one of our personal computers. <laughs> there, there you go. There you go. And the ingredients, again, that brings it back to architecture as well, which we should. Thanks for the reminder, because the ingredients are still, for beer, are still not grown in Hawaii. They're brought in and then they're brewed together, right? So then, you know, so and it hmm. so it might be with architecture, as we say, you know, the Soto, ever since, you know, America and the world blessed you with supposedly all the goodies, you know, you put them all together <laughs> and, and there you are. And that's how we need to get back to it. So to Sean, yes, Sean and Kaili are the most critical and progressive ones, artists, architects, and to really deserve the term or put that he deserves it anyway, but to put that degree to work, you got to do residency years, you know, do open heart surgery. So he's doing great artwork, but we got to get the two of them do architecture. That's what we seriously need. <laughs> And team up with you, as you already said, you're, you're happy to met. And then you will be asked for your qualification uh, on the island. And for that reason, we bring up the next slide and you tell us what that is. <laughs> I think it's, 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 nearing it's, 30, it's nearing 30 years of, of, of experience, right? Isn't that? Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, no, this is my, my in-laws house in Kailua. Um, that uh, we, I, I was pointing out that at some point, I mean, this was a very typical tract house that was built. Um, I want to say in the sort of this early seventies, uh, maybe late sixties. And, uh, but then later sometime in the eighties that had uh, where this red arrow is, had the a kind of a, a porch, jealousy porch built onto the, onto the back of it that um, I always thought was unfortunate because it sort of obliterated any any real natural ventilation that could come through the the original structure so uh we were thinking uh, or have thought at various points in time about trying to kind of reconfigure the back portion of this uh and use some of the rear land together with uh, some of the new adu uh, regulations that are allowable in in, Hon in in honolulu and in hawaii to to build a kind of an adu on the back that would uh, allow us to kind of expand uh our presence there and also uh, return the original house back to a kind of a more naturally ventilated state. Um, and with this kind of, you can, there's a sort of a courtyard that gets formed between the, the old part and the new part. And that's a future dream project that we haven't quite gotten, gotten underway yet, but. Uh, and tell me again, the, the red pointing arrow was pointing out the, I think the absurdity of blocking the, Possibility. Exactly. Right. This kind of T shape. I mean, the, the, the original T shape, I mean, there were windows and, you know, each of the bedrooms had windows and the two back bedrooms had corner, you know, windows in each uh, on each side of a corner. So they ventilated quite, quite, you know, they were built to, to ventilate naturally. But when you put this piece on it, um, it really, I think it, it and actually it, it eliminated windows along the bedrooms on that side and the, and the bathroom. So uh, my dream has always been to sort of take restore it at least back to its original glory and <laughs> make it a little bit more uh, more inhabitable. That that reminds me very much of the house behind mine, which was a U shape, and then the owners put a uh, put a wall and a roof over what had been the open back lanai, and just enclosed it. Mm -hmm. And eventually, mm -hmm. it was in such poor condition that their daughter in law, who was German. Uh, mm. tore it down and restored it to the back to the open plan that it originally had. And it's far superior in every way. And maybe they needed mm -hmm. more room in, inside for a time for, for their family. But restoring the house to its original appearance was a great idea. Yeah, I'm always and inspired that... by the by my experience 
every for 30 years the first night i arrive in honolulu you after you fly all day you get there and you lie down to go to sleep and and it is the best night's sleep you ever had with the breezes kind of uh washing over you any time of the year it's one of my my favorite experiences is that that first night of sleeping <laughs> under the the tropical breeze mm -hmm. Yep, same here. I had it in John Graham's Ala Moana Hotel, where, of course, it was all closed and curtains pulled closed. And then there was this thermostat that basically <laughs> said um, 75. And I'm like, hmm, that's what it is outside. So what's the point of this? <laughs> you know, turn it off, pull the curtains open, sliding door, and same thing. Exactly. And oh, so the the... The two little boxes down there, kind of on the same picture at the bottom right, trigger the current. The sort of we already talked about it. That's because you asked Matt, you know, the our kind of continuing to scratch our heads here in Germany about what to substitute Putin's gas and oil with, right? And now there's the. It seems to be like same as when I came to Nebraska, there was like the ethanol was like the big hype, and there were all these ethanol plants popping up until they found out, you know, the, the excess amount of water you need for that. And then it's just like, after all things considered, not such a good idea. And then, you know, but then <laughs> anyway, so now everyone jumps on the heat pump, right? And then, you know, the Vama pump. That's like, mm -hmm. a, and even they want to, they want to basically dictate by law, you know, almost. And it's it's kind of ironic to see now you're seeing actually popping up these machines that we never had, and they're not a air conditioned and air conditioned well they are, but in, you know in a different way, but not that different. And now I don't know if you heard uh, Matt, it really picked me off that uh, that Fisman as one of the traditional German manufacturers of furnaces, mm -hmm. right? Also mm -hmm. do these. They thought they had to sell out for. 15 billion to guess who who invented air conditioning in america mr carrier mm -hmm. at, in florida and i thought this is so absolutely absurd oh, the whole thing you know and and adding on to that one i was just reading you know, on the online news there was an article here in the bavarian uh, local newspaper online version and they basically were saying what kind of options of of heating do you have and they were listing and listing and listing technology and, and passive systems weren't even in there. So as if they don't exist. Oh, God. So it's this total yeah. extension. And you guys do you guys do technology and in, in supporting, you know, natural systems, right? Sure, there's always a little bit of um, a little bit of you know whistles and bells here and there as you know to support natural systems, but certainly not to, to substitute them. No, so, yeah, no, that's quite ironic. So um, let's mm. share a couple of your of your favorites. Uh, we only have four minutes left, but let's get started with that to the next <clears> slide. And you share with us some of your favorites on the island that basically exemplify and demonstrate what, what you just said. Oh, yeah. This so, of course, of the, of course, the Lilla Strand House, um, this was photos that I took. When I was uh, on just an, a magnificent day up there, we got the, the kind of their standard tour, uh, which is really, I mean, if if uh, if anybody who's watching hasn't been up, uh, has not reserved the time to go see that tour, it's just really, it's wonderful. It was led by um, Dr. Lilith Strand's former assistant, and she knows basically everything about it and about its history and seems to just love to to talk about that. So you can really spend an afternoon in that building and go all over inside of it. Um, and uh, of course it was designed and situated in such a way that the the kind of the cool air that rolls down the mountain kind of enters the the, the, the back, well, the front of the house technically, which is where the front door is, uh, but it's really the back of the house and there are little flaps over the windows that you can see in the lower photograph here in the center. Uh, you see these kind of slanted uh, pieces above the window. Those are flaps that let kind of of the cool air rolling down the mountain come in go through the the house transversely and then out through the the what i would consider the front of the house which is the one that looks out over the city which is the which is the the elevation on the right here um, but it's really just a a just a wonderful um 
place, both in terms of its sighting and its performance. That sounds all so familiar to you, DeSoto, right? <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> Not only because I live in an Ossipoff house, but also because I have been to the Lily Strand house a number of times. And it is it is magnificent, just as Matt said, and it's definitely worth viewing and seeing not only for the house, but the setting that it's in, which is incomparable. Yeah. And, and then as if to put it like the cherry on the, the cherry on the Sunday is the, uh, the Porsche in the, in the carport there, <laughs> the 911. Of course. And we see be behind you sort of in, in life, you know, we see your two windows, we see your doggy relaxing there and we hear the birds all the time so it's it's just like living with nature and not against it as unfortunately too much of contemporary and um you know as we've been going through many of the proposed projects we couldn't help ourselves to saying they're kind of going against nature um the um the caretaker of the house bob lilia strand unfortunately left us at least on earth um uh, recently and uh, there's a show quote up there where we had him on the show. He, that was one of the first shows we ever did with him. So it's well worth mm -hmm. uh, uh, watching that and, and hearing Bob saying in his words, you know, from just like you, DeSoto, having grown up in the house. Right? So he's uh, fully, the house is, is his childhood, is, is your house, is, is your childhood. And you are now that your mother is not with us anymore, you have similar ideas, maybe to also not just keep it to yourself, right? And but opening up to we'll see. Right. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> see. I, that that's a dream, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, always keep your dreams alive. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, and the Little Spent House is, is doing a great job. They have a foundation and they send us the newsletters and they have events up there and they really keep it, you know, keep it up through that. That's great. That's mm -hmm. a, kind of a private public partnership going on there. Well, with that, we're at the end of our beer drinking show here. <laughs> <laughs> and so beer we will, discussion show, we, not drink. We, we will, uh, of course, we all drink Faustkala Alkoholfrei. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we will pick up from here and uh, walk through the next of your goodies, Matt, that um, you will share with us. But for the actually next two weeks, the Soto is kindly stepping in and filling our Dokomomo playlist with some more goodies. And so we will see each other in three weeks to uh, resume from here. And until then, please stay all locally local, locally global, as they call it, local. Bye-bye. <laughs>